this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In this video, I'm covering example 4 from section 5-1 in the Savas Realize Algebra 1 textbook. So in this video, we are trying to determine the rate of change. Um, it's important to recognize this is the average rate of change. That's a very big distinction in physics. So they actually bring back Jay, our friend who rode in a boat in example three, and they, they bring back his graph. I don't know, maybe it's hard to come up with another graph or problem, whatever. And so what they're asking is, what is the rate of change over the interval from two to 2.5? So when we talk about a rate of change, we're talking about a slope. And so what we could do is we can use the slope formula. Remember the slope is our change in our y value divided by oops, our change in our x value. Got to make sure to use those right letters there. <laughs> there we go. And so when we're looking at a rate of change over an interval, like from 2 to 2.5, we're checking out the slope of that line right there. So all that we need to do is we need to determine those ordered pairs. So this one is at 2.15, and this one's at 2.530. And I'm just going to plug those into the slope formula. So my y2, right, is going to be my second value, which is the 2.5. So I have 2.5 minus my y. Oh, that's x, isn't it? Missy, 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 get yourself together. Too excited about this problem. So our y values, my y2 is my 30 minus my y1, which is 15, and then our x's are the 2.5 and the 2. So right there where I had flipped my x's and y's, kids do that all the time. And I, I think it's because the x comes first, you know, so you want to write it on the top. Try not, try not to make that goof the way I did, you know. So here we are. So 30 minus 15 is 15. And 2.5 minus 2 is 0.5. Now remember, if you divide by a, a number less than 1, it's actually going to make this come out bigger. So our average rate of change here is actually 30. So don't, don't freak out about um, the number becoming bigger here. Now, this was a word problem, right? This is a real world situation and we're producing some kind of number. So it's probably good to know the, you know, the, I don't know, the, the units of that number, isn't it? So remember our, our Y values are discussing miles, right? Or distance. And then down here, our X values are talking about time. So when I calculated my slope, we figured it out in miles per hour, which is a speed we're used to talking about, isn't it? I mean, in, in boats, I think they talk about like nauti nautical miles per hour. I think it's knots, but whatever, we're, we're trying. So there we are. There's our, our average rate of change. Okay. So now we have a problem with a girl named Kada, I think is how they say it. And she's chilling on one of those moving walkways at the airport, probably kind of bored. It says, after eight seconds, she gets on, she taps Lisa, who's standing alongside the walkway. And so the, the graph is showing Kada's distance from Lisa over time. So this is where she taps her. So they want us to calculate the rate of change from... Um, six to eight seconds and then they want us to calculate the rate of change from eight to twelve seconds I uh, really they're gonna be like that right here notice that it's not on a nice little tick mark and that's really annoying to me so here we go let's uh let's give this a shot So first I'm going to do from the 6 seconds to 8 seconds, all right? 
And I know those of you guys who don't know cursive, um, that funny little boat shape is my cursive S. Because S's and 5's look the same. So don't judge me here. So again, we need to use our slope formula. So I'm going to calculate my change in Y values. Let's see. So first I'm going to write some ordered pairs out here. So each of these is counting by 2. So this is at 6, comma, and these ones are counting by 4's. So this is at 6, comma, 4, and then 8, comma, 0. Okay. So my Y values, my Y2 is 0. So I'm going to do 0 minus 4. And then I'm going to do 8 minus 6. Now, I should be expecting to have a negative slope here, right? Because the, the graph is going downhill. So if you don't have a negative slope here, you done messed up AA wrong. So make sure to, to watch for that. So negative, or 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 8 minus 6 is 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And if we're talking about units here, right, we have feet per second. Okay, so we are looking at her speed. So as she's approaching Lisa, she's going ne negative 2 feet per second. Now that negative that's on there is because when we talk about velocity, right? Velocity has to do with the direction of the chain of the movement. So this is a negative speed because she's approaching her and, and it's getting closer. And this one's going to be a positive speed, and it's just describing the direction of chain, like travel. So don't freak out about that too bad. So now for this one, we have one endpoint at eight zero. And this one, we're going to kind of heavy sigh a little bit. It's halfway here. So if this is 4 away, right, this one's 12. Halfway between 8 and 12 is 10. So this is at 12, 10. So from 8 seconds to 12 seconds, her speed, or her average rate of change, is going to be 12 I'm sorry, 10 minus 8, so keep your y values subtracted here. So 10, oh, well, I said 8 and meant 0. Jeez, Louise. So again, my y values, 10 and 0. My x values are 12 and 8, and that's what's going to go down here. Uh, so 10 minus 0 is 10. 12 minus 8 is 4. Um, 10 divided by 4 is about 2.5, and this again is in feet per second. So, for some reason, the moving walkway sped up after she bonked Lisa. So, it could be that she started walking on the walkway. Okay, so... 2.5, again, is greater than 2. So she sped up after, I don't know, what did she do to Lisa? Oh, she, she tapped Lisa, right? <laughs> Whatever. We all know that if it was our friend, we would have, like, smacked her upside the head or something, right? So um, this indicates she could have started walking. to get away, right? Because it, it doesn't make sense for the moving walkway to start going faster just because she touched somebody, right? Those walkways have a set speed. So the, the only reason why that absolute value would have been, or that change would have been bigger is because of, of her own movement. Now my last thing I want to point out here uh, has nothing really to do with the problem, but with the graph. Okay, so I'm going to put this note here. This is not an absolute value graph. 
and you know it's not an absolute value graph because you have a 2 and a 2.5. Okay, their signs need to be opposite to be an absolute value graph, but this rate of change, the, the actual number itself, not the negative versus positive, but the number, so the 2 and the 2.5, those have to be the same for this to be an absolute value graph. All right, because absolute value graphs are symmetric. So um, don't don't let yourself think this is an absolute value graph just because it's in the absolute value section. Alrighty, so there we go. That is determining the average rate of change. Until next time.